Coming up on DTNS, Facebook tweaks the news feed again. Everybody's doing Clubhouse or AR glasses and why NFTs are disappearing. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, March 31st, 2021 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. Salt Lake City, I'm Scott Johnson. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chain. We were just talking about tornadoes, earthquakes, spam, and more on Good Day Internet. If you'd like to get that wider conversation, become a member at patreon.com slash DTNS. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Hitachi announced it intends to acquire the digital engineering services company Global Logic for $9.6 billion. The deal is expected to close in July pending regulatory approval, with Hitachi hoping it will strengthen its IT, energy, industry, and mobility businesses. Despite restrictions from the United States, Huawei reported 3.8% revenue growth in 2020, Almost entirely from within China. Revenue fell 11.2% in the fourth quarter, though, showing that the effect of restrictions was continuing to grow. In fact, the U.S. increased restrictions to stop chip supplies in September. And Huawei had to rely on existing inventories to make phones and sell its Honor smartphone brands. So that probably explains the Q4 number. Most concerns in the U.S. about Huawei are about its networking equipment, not its handsets. And the networking business was hit the hardest. The firm's networking business grew 0.2% in 2020, so basically flat. Instagram launched a new feature called Remix that lets users record their reels alongside a video from another user. And yes, if that sounds familiar, this is a ripoff of TikTok's popular duets feature because people like to use it. Remix has been in public testing for some time and some Instagram users may already have access. Can we say they remixed Remix? Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Apple Maps now shows travel guidance from the Airports Council International on an individual's airport's place card. This will show mask requirements, health screenings, and quarantine guidelines before taking off and landing at a destination with links to official airport guidance as well. The U.S. Pentagon announced that Microsoft won a contract to build at least 120,000 custom HoloLens augmented reality headsets for the U.S. Army. For the Army, Microsoft calls it the Integrated Visual Augmented System, or IVAS, and it can display a map and a compass, also use thermal imaging to reveal people in the dark, and assist with aiming. A Microsoft spokesperson tells CNBC the contract could be worth up to $21.88 billion over the next 10 years. Who wants to hear a story about non-fungible tokens? Me. Me. All right. <laughs> Motherboard posted a story earlier this week about multiple occurrences where someone bought an NFT and then the thing the NFT referred to disappeared. And everybody was like, wait, I thought the whole point of NFTs is that you could never change the record. You need to understand a few things about NFTs to make sense of all this. NFTs, as I just said, stand for non-fungible token. That means it's like a cryptocurrency, but you can't spend it. It's not currency. It's not fungible. However, it does use a blockchain, which is a digital ledger that is extremely difficult to alter. So difficult that banks are starting to use it for some kinds of functions. Now, nothing is fully secure, but a blockchain can be very secure, very resistant to tampering. So all that means is that NFTs are an official record of ownership that pretty much can't be changed. The digital item you buy is not unique. Other folks may have copies of the art or the song, et cetera. You are the recorded owner, though. That's what the NFT gets you. It's similar to numbered collectibles in the real world, where number one is exactly like number 1,200, except for the number. But if you have number one, you get the bragging rights of owning number one. A couple other things to be aware of. You need to be careful who you're buying your NFT from and on what platform you're buying it. Becoming the official recorded owner of Jack Dorsey's first tweet won't be nearly as impressive if you buy it from me instead of Jack Dorsey, uh, or if the Jack Dorsey you bought it from is an office manager in Highland, Illinois, not the CEO of Twitter. It's, it's just not the same thing. You want to make sure you're buying it from the official source. So you need to buy from verified users to make sure you're getting it from that official source or the record is meaningless. The record will be there, but it doesn't mean anything. Platforms like OpenSea and uh, others are constantly trying to prevent fraudsters from using their platforms. Uh, OpenSea does verification. In fact, uh, Len Peralta took a while to get verified so that people could be sure, oh, I'm really buying from Len. There's another problem though, and that's what Motherboard is covering. So back to the disappearing NFTs. The NFT is just the record 
not the item. So it's not the record that's disappearing. If you're like, I thought this blockchain was hard to alter. It is. NFTs, however, can incorporate the digital item into the record, but they usually don't. Instead, the record on the blockchain usually just includes a URL pointing to where the digital item is hosted. Now that may be fine with a tweet, it's probably not going anywhere, but if it's just pointing to my web server with the art that I sold you, well, I control that server. Now that may not be a big deal because NFTs aren't about copy prevention, they're just about bragging rights, so your record is still there. But if the record only includes a link, the page could go away, either through incompetence, accident, malice, or something else. In fact, some NFT marketplaces like OpenSea can shut off the reference to the URL in their system when you're looking at the collection you bought if they find that the seller was violating the law, maybe selling an item they didn't have the rights to, for example. In that case, the URL might still be there in the record and it might still resolve to the thing you bought, but the marketplace won't show it in your collection on, when you're logged into its platform. And so you'd have to do a bunch of extra work to try to find it. Of course, there are other reasons for disappearances, sometimes delays, and how the transaction gets processed can make it seem like something is not there and then it shows up later. So some of the people claiming their stuff disappeared just needed to wait a little longer. Similar things happen with variants of Ethereum coins being used as described in the mother motherboard article, where if you're using a variant, maybe it's hard to find it on the blockchain. Like in all things, the upshot of all of this is buyer beware in the NFT market. It's possible to do it safely, but you can't just assume that it's being done safely when you enter. Wow. So that was great. Um, I have to tell you this, Tom. We talked about it a little bit pre-show. I'm going to say it again. Um, you helped me understand NFTs a little bit. I've been dabbling in possibly putting some stuff up, been a little bit back and forth on it, started the process in a couple of areas, getting some money in there, getting a, a marketplace set up, and then not for a bit because it seems like, there's a little backlash happening right now. So this story is maybe part of that, but um, it seems to be spread between like my, the most ardent uh, fans I have of an NFT that are, also, that are also artists are just singing its praises all day long and can't say enough about it and are bombarding their social feeds with nothing but NFT discussion. And it's a little uh, crazy on that end. And then way over on this side, I have a whole bunch of people that are like, do not go anywhere near NFTs to the point that some of them say, don't even talk about her. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna mute you on all my social. You better media. say NFL, not NFT. <laughs> right? Yeah, like not into it. And some of them are just straight up like you know all the arguments. It's ruining the environment too. These don't really work. It's it's scam bait, and it's this is just early. Everybody taking low hanging fruit, and eventually you're gonna get hosed. And it's honestly made me just a little bit, um, not gun shy, but I'm not ready to pull the trigger until I see some of this kind of flesh out. It feels like. Not bubbly, but that kind of feeling of like, what's this market oh, doing? Oh, it's bubbly. Yeah, just let it kind of, you know, let me see some semblance of normalcy before I, before I pull that trigger. And well, you've got know. you've got this combination of the the concept of an NFT is really new, even for us on our show. It's like, okay, now we're talking about this all the time because it has a lot of hype and and we're seeing some stuff evolve really quickly, and so you've got you've got sort of that frenzy aspect of it. And then you've got actual artists who are like, or, or people who would like to be, uh, you know, buying NFTs from a variety of creative people being like, whoa, 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 what is happening here? What is the, what, where is the trusted place that I go? Am I going to get ripped off the same way you might buy like, I don't know, fake Nikes on the internet, right? It happens right. all the time. The blockchain thing isn't going to solve that necessarily. But like you said, Tom, you have to look back at the source and figure, okay, what am I buying? How much does it mean to me? Does the price seem fair? And who is it coming from? And then you can get the things that you want. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, think of it this way. I just realized this. It's a permanent record of you falling for a scam, <laughs> right? Right. If you do it wrong. <laughs> Right, so yeah. make real sure before you create that permanent record of your purchase that you're I not falling not, for a scam. Had not even thought of it that way. Well, let's move on to Facebook where they're making some changes you might like, or maybe you won't. I don't know. Facebook announced a couple of new features. A feed filter bar will now show up at the top of your news feed, at least on mobile, with access to your most frequently used filters. If you're on Android, you already have this. iOS is coming soon. You're able to get the news feed as the algorithm intends, a feed based on your favorites, or... 
ordered chronologically by most recent, something we've been begging for forever. This is now available on Android, as I mentioned, very soon to iOS. Like Twitter, you can now limit who comments on one of your posts. Your choices are everyone, friends, or just people and profiles that you've mentioned in the post. So very Twitter-like in that way. What I hope is that uh, this not only succeeds and people are stoked about it, but it bleeds over into their other property, Instagram, which could really use a chronological listing once again. Oh, man. I remember when Instagram went algorithm, and I was so mad, and then I got over it because what am I going to do? You know, <laughs> call up Zuckerberg and be like, change it back. But on Facebook, I had this, I had this situation this morning where – I don't go to Facebook every day, but I try to, I, you know, check in a couple of times a week because that's where a lot of my friends and, and family members and stuff hang out. And there was a post right at the top from a friend who had posted something. It was like a, it was a personal family thing. And it was really important that I saw it. That's where she was sharing it with folks. And the reason it was at the top of my feed was because it had gotten a lot of engagement, comments, likes, hearts, that sort of thing. But even if it hadn't, I would still want to see that. And that's what I want to see at 8 a.m. when I log into Facebook is what's happening right now. But it's been so long since I've thought of Facebook in a way that I can do that. I wonder how many people will take advantage of this and think of it more like the, the Twitter option of, yes, like breaking news, what just happened. Honestly, the chronological feed is one of those things that a lot of people very loudly say they want but most people don't use. Uh, that's what we found on Twitter, statistically speaking, and it's probably gonna be true at Facebook as well. That said, I think this should be an option because For you sure. wanna be user-friendly and there are a significant number, even if it's a minority of people who want that. So let them have it, come on. Well, moving on to AR, heard of it? Kind of a big deal, or maybe will be <laughs> as we go along. Bloomberg's Mark Gurman reports that in the next several months, that's all he said, Apple's, Apple may make an announcement for a mixed reality headset. There have been some rumors swirling around about when that's going to happen. It seems to be happening, but we don't exactly know when. German says, if so, this would be Apple's first major new device since the Apple Watch in 2015, which is a big deal to Apple, obviously. But he also notes, Apple doesn't want to make a big product announcement like this at an online event. WWDC will be an online event for its second consecutive year. So hmm, who knows, but it's probably pretty unlikely that we're going to get any sort of announcement, even though there have been a few rumors around that based on, you know, the, the little Easter eggs that, that Apple sends out. Also, in the same vein, the information sources say that Snap is developing a new pair of spectacles that will operate as an AR headset with integrated displays aimed at developers and also creators, and that Snap is also reportedly working on a drone, having previously invested $20 million in a Chinese drone company and acquiring the drone company Control Me Robotics back in 2017. Um, yeah, uh, as far as the like, will they, won't they have Apple, are, are those glasses in the invite mean, mean AR glasses? I, I don't really care personally. Uh, just let me know when they announce it. I want to know what it is. It doesn't have to be a WWDC. It could be later this year, whatever. I Same mean, with Snap. I care if they're going to announce something, but yes, I think it's- I, I care think it's, when this is, they announce it. Exactly. Yeah. Well, this is, you know, it's typical Apple stuff of, I want there to be this thing, this new hardware product that Apple is probably- working on sure you know we can say that but is it going to happen uh in the beginning of june it's highly no. unlikely yeah just call me when somebody makes one though right i i know you mentioned the hololens uh being made for the u.s army uh there's lots of enterprise uses for augmented reality we, we've documented that that show a bunch somebody's gonna make a consumer version of this that catches on at some point nobody knows when that's gonna be you can make some good bets that it might, you know, might be more likely to be Apple than Snap, but you can't guarantee that because uh, nobody thought Apple was going to make a phone that was better than Palm and BlackBerry. But guess what? <laughs> this is the world we live in. So uh, I'm, I'm, I know it's coming. I think it's coming within. I'll conservatively say the next two years, but probably within the next year. Uh, and I'm very curious who's gonna who's gonna crack the code on it that makes people go, oh yeah, I'll wear that. Yeah, it's a little surprising, though, given that the tech is actually pretty good, like on phones and tablets. Um, Apple's own AR tech is really nice when you use it. But I had to ask myself the other day, when's the last time I actually used it? What was compelling yeah. on that screen that would it's be all about as compelling or more? Factor, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like a headset sounds more compelling. I'll, I will admit that. But is it, though, or will will 
I don't want to have to pick up my right. phone, point it at the thing, right? right and same right. thing. A lot of people are like, I don't want to have to wear glasses, or I'm already wearing glasses, so yeah. I better yeah. not look weird it's with the glasses be light. I have. It's got to be as light as glasses. It's got to be simple, convenient, and easy, and then really powerful on what you use them it for. It needs to be implants. Exactly. They, that's actually probably I mean, true. All kidding aside, it really does. Maybe. Yeah. Because there are people who are like, I'm not wearing glasses. Yeah. It, you know, for those of us who have to wear glasses, it's like, oh, maybe you can, you know, make them cool in an AR way type thing. I'm used to this. But there are going to be a, a huge subset of people who are like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Well, folks, uh, are you going to wear some augmented reality glasses? Would you rather have implants? Do you not like it at all? Let us know in our Discord. You can join it by linking to a Patreon account at patreon.com slash DTNS. Well, clubhouse knockoffs are also all the rage uh, right now. This, this is the thing that happens when something catches on. Everybody goes, oh, that's a good idea. Let's try that too, right? Uh, Discord is launching a new version of its voice channels called Stage Channels. Basically just takes the tech they had and puts it in a package that works the way Clubhouse works. These channels have some extra moderator controls that let you raise your hand. That's something new. Uh, lets the moderator easily approve someone to start talking without having to constantly mute and unmute them. Also lets participants indicate that they have something to say with the raise the hand thing. All like Clubhouse. A Discord server will need to be a community server in order to add the stage channels. LinkedIn also confirmed that it's testing a social audio experience in its app that looks a lot like Clubhouse. The company believes its audio offering will be differentiated by tying accounts to an individual's professional rather than their social identity. And meanwhile, The Verge's Casey Newton tweeted today, some new data I just got on this from Sensor Tower on Clubhouse downloads. February Clubhouse downloads 9.6 million installs. And in March, 2.6 million installs. So it went down 73% between February and March. Listen, Clubhouse is not my jam. I was invited some time ago. I, I am on iOS, so you know I'm lucky enough to have been able to give it a whirl. And I've talked in the past. And I don't want to trash a platform that a lot of people really get a lot of use of uh, out of because people do but uh you know it's it's it seems to me to be this is a great feature for a company that already exists yep. discord makes sense linkedin sense. okay sure exactly Probably. like twitter d doing the same thing facebook reportedly working on something like that you know for all of these companies to say huh this is a pretty cool idea let's build this into the platform that we already have and not buy the company Clubhouse. You know yeah. that that's what makes sense to me. The Clubhouse thing itself is yeah, it's 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 almost like the NFT the NFT train where there's so much like oh this is this is the future. This is gonna kill podcasts. None of that makes any sense. <laughs> no, no, it I makes think, no sense. I, I think you're absolutely right. Clubhouse is about to get meerkatted. Remember, yeah. meerkat was the thing. Oh my gosh, I can I can live stream from anywhere. And then Periscope ate its lunch, got sold to Twitter, and then live streaming just became a feature. I think that is 100% a good act or a, a that's I'd put money on that prediction. I think that is correct. Um and it's unfortunate cuz you just sort of see the writing on the wall. But I will say this feature in Discord which we played around very briefly with before the show seems all right. It seems like an easier way to just sort of have everyone muted that you want to be and only the people with voice that you want. And an easier way for people to say, hey, I have something, and you letting them talk. Like, that's useful in raids, in meetings, in all kinds of uh, gaming ex examples that I could think of and list here, but I won't. But but that's that's a that's actually seemed like a tool that's usable. Mm -hmm. The other thing, using Clubhouse, just sort of raw Clubhouse, has always struck me as, well, clubby and weird. I don't like it. I'm kind of with Sarah. So... I know we've talked about it enough and we don't have to talk about how much we hate Clubhouse, but at least this feels like a useful integration into a service I'm already using and they're not going to charge for it. So I think, I think that that's fine for Discord, not so fine for Clubhouse. Yeah, I mean, we use audio features on Discord for DTNS every day. Yeah. We don't really have enough of us to need something like this because, you know, it's, you just talk when you need to talk. But I could see there just being a few more folks in there, and it would make a lot of sense to be like, okay, let's treat this a little bit more like a meeting. But that's how Clubhouse has always been. Or, or we could do a and a with the audience and use it as the as the Clubhouse feature, right? Absolutely. Instead of what we're doing, which is just streaming the show to it. 
Exactly. Right. Well, yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah, or something something separate that's, you know, at a, yeah, yeah. At a specific time and come on in and, you know, be part of it. I think the clubhouse thing, that, that I, I don't know why it bothers me so much. And I think a lot of it has to do with the celebrity factor because it's always yeah. Elon Musk is in this room. And I'm like, oh, who cares? You know, just like, tell me what happened afterwards. <laughs> you know, yeah. just, just give me a paragraph of what happened because that's all I really need, you know, to go on about my day if there's any breaking news going on. But yeah. uh, but I think that that's all. That's just, you know, it's new and hip and cool. And, and people will continue to use tools like this when they need to. But it's not like this. Yeah, like like you said, Scott, like some clubby room that you have to, you know, hop in and feel cool to be part of. Yeah. By the way, you want to hear some serious NFT, uh, pro NFT talk. Go check mm. out Clubhouse. Um, all right, moving on. <laughs> hey, the latest beta of iOS is also interested in voice things. Uh, they have two new voices uh, that they're adding to Siri in English, so that's cool. And here's the weird part or the new part: when you set up Weary, you'll be uh, Weary Siri. You'll be asked to choose from multiple voices. <laughs> A female voice is no longer the default. Uh, the new voices are run through Apple's neural text to speech engine to make themes sound more. Natural. So you're gonna have a choice with that particular personal assistant. Can we can we please call it weary from now on? <laughs> when you're tired of it. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I'm actually quite tired. Weary, help. Yeah. yeah. I'm a little weary of Siri. Uh, uh, I, I've had my my Siri <laughs> as a default British accent man since it first came along. So uh, I don't understand why it had to default to a lady's voice. I love the idea of just like, hey, which which voice do you want? We got a few different types here. We got a few different flavors. Go this for is it. Kind of, it's kind of a funny thing that's been going on for years, even before voice assistants. You know, there were there were online assistants that could help, I don't know, help you book meetings and manage your calendar. And there still are. There are plenty of them. But there was some kind of backlash some years ago because a few of these these services were were labeled with women's names. And it was like, so your EA has to be a woman? Is that what you're saying, company kind of thing? And I remember thinking, that's that's an interesting point. It was It's not something that's ever bothered me personally, but it does seem uh, like it makes a lot more sense to be like, you have a voice assistant, super customized to you. Everything about this is supposed to be customized to you, right. including the voice that talks to you. I want Jeeves. Yeah, you want sure. Jeeves back. Yeah. That's what you've always wanted. Yeah. yeah. So that's I what mean, I got. I mean, I, look, they're, I like the, the, all of them for some reason did made that decision. And I'm my whole thing is, okay, great. Male, female, uh, British, English, uh, different languages don't care. Just give me more choice and and I and and default me in such a way that says, hey, yeah. which do you, of these do you like? Like just now make let it me part change of the, the wake word next. Come on. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Go. The customized wake word will change everything. Change I can't life. wait. <laughs> it will it will change my life. It'll certainly change my household. <laughs> yeah. Well, Whisk announced that it expects to begin implementation of its Cora Air Taxi in New Zealand later this year. That means test flying the autonomous drones and collecting data to help integrate it into airspace systems. Boeing subsidiary Inst in situ Pacific will help support the trial, and the implementation is the next step in Whisk's plan to offer Cora flights to passengers in the Canterbury region of New Zealand's South Island, which includes, which includes Christchurch, Hasn't set a date for that yet, but I think we're inching closer. Yeah, so this is they they'd been promising uh, to to carry passengers soon, quote unquote, and everybody's like, yeah, yeah. This is the one Larry Page's uh, Kitty Hawk is is backing along with Boeing, uh, and so everybody's like, what's soon mean? Now that they're actually doing this integration, you get a better sense of what soon means because if they think they'll get this integration done by the end of the year, then. Uh, they would be able to start carrying passengers and test flights in 2022. Uh, so it it doesn't mean they're going to carry passengers. That doesn't mean they have a date, but it means we're closer to understanding how they would get to a date because they're they're doing these actual tests. Yeah. Also, uh, New Zealand, good place to be doing this right now because their rates of COVID-19 are extremely low. And as we enter a phase of more vaccinations, which means should be lower rates, those guys are perfect for this. You don't want to do... They're, they're better. 
there are better reasons for New Zealand. Also, it's just less dense. Well, that too. But you know what I'm saying? Like, there's an advantage right now. Like, if you <laughs> there's said, also hey, we're two doing islands. This in... Like, yeah. how do we yeah. get from was... one to the other? I'm not if sure that COVID York... played into their decision in any way. I, I'm just saying. I'm, Maybe not. Little... But I'm I, I'm saying that's lucky then because whether because by the time they not... get to passengers, I mean, knock on wood, hopefully that we're in we're in better shape. Yeah, I would hope so. I will say, just as an aside. A friend of mine who was not, I, uh, I, would, I would say he would not call himself a technical person, the other day said, Sarah, did you know that they're going to be doing like Uber, for, but for uh, helicopter taxis pretty soon? Have you heard about that? It's starting to become a thing where people are like, people are, oh. It's bubbling up into their consciousness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, like, it's yeah. like people, I, I use Uber just as an example, but well, you know, that's it, just that's one a of- real thing, yeah. Yeah, one of many companies that's working on it. But I was like, I have heard about this. In fact, <laughs> haven't seen it yet. But uh, we You're are like, we have are you heard of the show I'm on? Daily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, whenever I say that, they yes, say, I don't know. I think whatever. eyes glaze over. I know. Yeah. Sure, to me too. It, yeah. Yeah. You know how it is. <laughs> All right, let's check out the mailbag. Let's do it. This one comes from Christian, and this is in response to yesterday's story about Google Maps Live View working indoors. And Christian says, I develop resources for self-represented litigants for the Maryland judiciary. I'd love to have this feature for some of the larger courthouses in Maryland, not only for wayfinding. I envision using it for accessibility, like navigating to accessible and entrances, exits, highlighting elevators, for example, or for individuals with limited English proficiency, pointing to native language resources or offices to request interpretation or translation. Christian says, I hope this new feature is not just limited to broad, here are some stairs, go down one level, as was shown in Google's example GIF. Christian, you're absolutely right. Uh, those are great features to put on their roadmap. It's, it's probably going to be limited to here are some stairs, go down one level, but they're just starting to do it indoors, right? right. Uh, so if if it doesn't have all these features that you're suggesting, uh, give them a minute, even though they're Google, uh, and 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 pressure them to make sure they, they you add the ones that they don't have uh, to the roadmap. Because I, I think these are all important things to have. They may not be able to just add all that stuff at once. Uh, ask any project manager near you why. Uh, but, but yeah, uh, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they'll have a bunch of these in there at launch, which would be even better. This would be well, amazing in Vegas, by the way. Amazing. Oh, my you gosh, Because yeah. when you're in the middle of a, one of those casinos and you're like, okay. The casinos won't like it, though. <laughs> no, they'll hate it. They want they, you to get lost and get end stuck. up at the $5 then, blackjack table. Yeah. 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 Just have a up. drink. Stay a while. You're right. You're right. It's oh my confusing gosh. on purpose. Getting lost in a casino. And they're, they they always have good signage, but you're still like, where is it? Mm -hmm. ah, where am I going? It's annoying. If you have feedback on anything that we talk about on the show, questions, comments, all of it, send it to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Also, shout out to patrons at our master and our grandmaster levels. Today, they include Ragnar Varmadal, Jeff Wilkes, and Bjorn Andre. Also, an extra special thanks to Chris Allen. Chris Allen, who has supported amount-wise us the most over the years. You get a trophy and you rock, Chris. Thank you. Also, thanks to Scott Johnson for being with us today. Scott, what has been going on in Frog Pants Land? Well, a uh, lot of stuff going on. The If you've been following my Fred and Can comic, tomorrow we finish up a story uh, dealing with uh, Mendoza the Goose. If that sounds familiar to you, then you've been enjoying it. Um, I have kind of Tom to thank for that because he sort of put it out there that we should do a little mini story. And I did, and I had a blast with it. That finishes up tomorrow. If you want to find out about that and everything else I got going on, there's a new newsletter that you can get. It's over at frogpants.club. Speaking of clubs, uh, this is a really cool club. No NFT talk, I promise. So go check it out. That's at frogpants.club and stay informed and check it out. Indeed. But I can't wait for the exciting conclusion to yeah. the Mendoza storyline. Very excited I hope it about works. this. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sure it will. Uh, hey, folks, uh, you, don't, you don't have to be like, Chris Allen. Uh, no, there's only one Chris Allen, uh, but we love patrons that stick with us a long time like Chris. That's why we're happy to offer Patreon loyalty rewards. You can get at the highest levels, the four highest levels of support, a unique sticker, mug, t-shirt, or hoodie every three months, as long as you stay a patron at that level. Each one has unique art from Len Peralta. Uh, there's the DTNS seven-year anniversary logo. Uh, there's one with Roger, one with Sarah, one with me. Get the details. Paul Reese just got a shipment, they told me in an email this week, at patreon.com slash DTNS. 
We are live on this show Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern. That's 2030 UTC. Put it on your calendar. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We are back here tomorrow with Allison Sheridan. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>